So I'll give you guys just a second to read this quote that we have above on the screen. I think that um, in a lot of ways you could say the issues that are raised in David Orr's um, statement are kind of the thrust behind our research project. Um, and that is the displacement, um, detachment in society today between people and the physical spaces that we inhabit. Um, in adolescence, you see this particularly in the use of video games and TV and computers after school. Um, in terms of food consumption, you see it with uh, food traveling thousands of miles to get to their plates, um, oftentimes being so processed so as to be kind of unrecognizable um, from the ingredients that were originally put in it. Um, so a number of kind of issues are being, a number of um, kind of, th this issue is being addressed uh, in a number of ways um, in American society today, and one of those is schoolyard gardens. Um, so good afternoon, I'm Sam. I'm Erin. I'm Libby. I'm Katie. And we are um, Wellness and Gardening, creating an after-school club at Burnley Moran. Great. So just to give you guys a little bit of background on the schoolyard garden movement in Charlottesville specifically, in 2009, City Schoolyard Garden started the first garden at Buford Middle School, specifically as an outdoor classroom space to integrate science curriculum and standards of learning in an outdoor and experiential learning venue. Um, Within a couple of years, Charlottesville City Schools, um, specifically the school board, noticed the positive impacts that the schoolyard garden was having on both the school and the students, and challenged City Schoolyard Garden to establish a garden in each Charlottesville City School. So UVA then came in, um, starting with a year-long independent study, specifically researching best practices for elementary schoolyard garden programs, and meeting with each of the six elementary schools to figure out what they wanted in a garden program catered to that school's needs. Um, so by the spring of 2012, three of the six elementary schools had a program plan, and um, by the fall, all six schools had baseline funding to break ground. So, kind of the third step of this timeline that Libby is outlining is the institutionalization of each of these gardens at the various schools. Um, this process was begun at Burnley Moran last year through a Seabird grant that Libby conducted, actually focusing on developing in-classroom curricula to bring students and teachers out into the garden um, more often. Burnley Moran then explicitly stated that they would like to supplement this in-classroom curriculum with an after-school program, and that's kind of where we step in. So our research was focused on um, further integrating the garden into the school with the development of an after-school program, as well as um, encouraging healthy lifestyle habits through this after-school program. Um, to achieve this, we hosted organized, hosted, and ran a um, after-school program for third and fourth grade students focusing on three main principles, those being exercising, environmental stewardship and vegetable gardening, and nutrition. And so our goal was to kind of incorporate these principles into the club lessons each week. Um, and that typically involved an exercise at the beginning of the club, whether that was um, yoga or a game of kickball, uh, before moving on to a snack, and then having a lesson that related uh, maybe to gardening or to environmental stewardship. Um, to nutrition or food sourcing. Um, so one of my favorite examples of kind of the integration of these principles was what we did on the first and second days of club. Uh, so on the first day, we took the kids out to the garden. We kind of introduced the garden space. We talked about kind of gardening practices, what gardens are, why we garden, um, talked about terms like harvesting, and then we were able to actually harvest potatoes, green onions, um, and basil from the garden. Um, on the second week of club, we were inside. Um, we talked about kind of nutrition and specifically different cooking techniques. Um, talking about how that can have such an impact on the nutritional value of what you're eating. So for example, um, frying potatoes as opposed to baking potatoes. Um, we were then able to take the potatoes and the green onions and the basil that we had harvested about 100 yards away a week earlier and make uh, baked hash browns uh, with those. And we love this photo because you can see one of our participants kind of squeamishly mixing together the hash browns that she was um, hesitant to eat, uh, but she did eat them and she loved them. And that's something that we have seen throughout the course of our experience. Actually, just last week, uh, we made baked uh, kind of green bean fries um, with Parmesan cheese for the kids. And um, we asked before, you know, how many of you like green beans? And as you can imagine, there was kind of a modest showing of hands. Uh, but after trying the green bean fries that we made, um, I think everyone that tried it said that they liked them. So just kind of introducing um, kind of more appetizing ways to cook these foods uh, is something that we've been focusing on. So as Sam and Aaron mentioned, we worked to incorporate these lessons into an eight week long curriculum that we wrote at the beginning of last semester. And in order to gauge how these lessons positively impacted students' healthy habits, we conducted pre and post club assessments as well as weekly journals and took written observ uh, recordings of students' observations. The 
pre and post club assessments were 25 minute in depth questionnaires um, kind of asking students about what their previous knowledge of nutrition and environmental stewardship and what their cooking habits were and you know what their physical activity generally was and then at the end of the semester after our eight week long club we conducted these assessments again and compared the students answers and graded them on a sliding scale for specificity and correctness in order to understand how the students had started to incorporate our lessons into their lifestyles at home. Additionally, each week we had students conduct a 10 minute blog post or uh, journal entry and it asked them questions such as one healthy habit I learned today was as well as how can I use that healthy habit in their life at home or when hanging out with their friends or in school and there was an opportunity for students to draw a picture of maybe what their favorite club activity was or what their favorite food was that we tried that day and then these blog posts were added to our club's blog online so that teachers and students and their parents could go back and like look and understand and use the recipes that we posted to further incorporate this into like their regular life. Additionally, we wrote down uh, students' verbal observations and their discussions and how they're starting to incorporate these things and tie lessons together each week. And we also host regular meetings with our community partners, the teachers at Burnley Moran, uh, Ms. Rachel Spears and uh, Rachel Savoy and Jessica <laughs> Spears, pardon me, and the garden coordinator, Matt Daring, um, in order to track our progress and how we would further this program in the spring semester. Great, so as you can imagine, there were a number of, of uh, obstacles that we faced working with elementary school age children specifically related to data collection. Um, as well, the scope of our project was only one year long, but we are hoping to track these lifestyle habits, and so that added a level of difficulty <laughs> as well. That being said, our research indicates positive student and teacher responses to this club and highlights its potential, highlights the potential of the garden space um, as a tool to inspire healthy lifestyle habits. Um, so to date, we have accomplished all four of our outlined goals, um, being one, to increase student interaction with the garden, two, to um, further integrate the garden into the school's infrastructure through the development of this after school program, and then to actually write the curriculum and run the club. So speaking a little bit more to our qualitative and quantitative data, um, as Katie mentioned, we conducted pre and post assessments and we saw an increase of 8% in the individual average scores in those assessments, highlighting um, an increased knowledge um, about the subjects that we had taught throughout the semester. As well, we saw um, students using examples and vocabulary from lessons in their journal entries um, or in the written observations that Katie mentioned. Um, Students also brought home a lot of recipes to their parents and they would note that in the questions that we just showed on the board. As well, we had a lot of kids come into the club as uh, picky eaters, if you will. Like Sam mentioned, we really encourage students to try new foods during snacks and kind of our biggest success story with this was one of our students last semester was incredibly picky, um, but we took a field trip to Red Hill Farm, which is just a couple minutes away, um, and he actually tried a cherry tomato off the vine there and loved it despite his initial hesitation. Um, and lastly, we saw students drawing a lot of connections between club lessons and what we were doing and their outside activities. So we saw students bringing um, vocabulary from standard of learnings in the classroom to club days. We did a whole skit about food miles one day and students were talking about consumers and producers. As well, we saw students taking lessons from the club into other areas. So the same student actually was interviewed by NBC 29 for Burnley Moran's back, or Farm to Table Week. Um, and he used uh, a quote almost exactly from the skit in his interview, which was really neat to see that connection. Great. So as Aaron just mentioned, um, our club really seemed to help increase the presence of Burnley Moran Schoolyard Garden as an educational space. Um, we plan to share what we learned um, and did over this past year by compiling a book of our lesson plans as well as the lessons that we learned over the year and share it with the five other elementary schools as well as City Schoolyard Garden. And then finally, um, one of our biggest goals coming into this was ensuring that the project was sustainable. Um, all four of us are fourth years, so we're graduating next year and wanted to make sure that the club um, came on, or moved on. Um, and so we are really excited that we have another JPC team coming in, um, continuing our work, um, expanding the garden physically across um, more of Burnley Moran's grounds and further integrating the garden into the daily infrastructure of the school. Um, so we wanted to thank Eleanor Wilson for being our faculty advisor and all of our community partners, and to you guys for giving us this opportunity that we have really appreciated and enjoyed. So thank you.